Hey, it's Sunday, September 23rd, 2018. I'm John Knox with Chris Haskell and Ginger. And we're up in Mount Lemon, up in the, the family's cabin in Mount Lemon. It's a very rustic place. This is probably the most comfortable place for you to be of all the spots in Tucson. Yeah, <laughs> no question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because family had had this cabin since the late 40s so when you were born you always were able to come up here yeah. anytime you wanted to yeah I, I uh, broke my big wheel in half right in our driveway <laughs> that's a big wheel like from the what the late 60s or early yeah, 70s? yeah I had friends tell me that's not even possible <laughs> what are you talking about I said you don't see my driveway <laughs> when I started doing a lot of hiking out here um, when I would get out to Mount Whitney, San Gorgonio, San Jacinto, White Mountain, uh, Baldy, Mount Baldy, you know, when I was out in nature, the chemtrails overhead or the whatever you want to call them, were, were they seemed worse than when I was seeing them in Los Angeles in the city. So you know, I would, have, and, and a lot of people that are strongly t uh, connected to nature, like you are, they are the ones that notice the chemtrails first. A lot of the city people, they just don't see it. There's another uh, example, the, what you hear in the fire, pop, pop, pop. Um, yeah. Never heard that in the past. I mean, yeah, you would hear a little bit of it, especially if you put in uh, the, the leaves or whatever from mm -hmm. pines. But it was nothing like this when it comes to just small branches being in, and now it's, it's insane. So you think the chemicals that are raining Absolutely. out of the air from the chemtrails are... Yeah, we actually did a test on a couple of our, on our bark of our tree in this massive amount of aluminum. Wow, wow. Now, we're going to cover what's immediately happening, and then we're going to go back later on and cover some of the history of, of what you've been through over the last decade. Correct. And just to bring a few of you up to speed, Chris Haskell is the sign avenger here in Tucson, Arizona. Put up thousands of signs similar to this and other amazing designs. And eventually ran into a problem with the state and they fabricated charges and right now so let's bring this right up to speed right now Chris had to sign a plea agreement about two days ago and why don't you tell uh, the folks about that yeah and that it was difficult signing that I almost felt like I was crossing my own supporters and doing it was wrong but I was basically forced into it anyway so I had to and the plea, what I signed. Now, let's, let's define that for a second. How do you feel you were forced into it? You know, because they, the court asked you, do you, were you coerced in any way? And you had to say no. Yeah, unfortunately. So what's your feeling on that? Well, let me see. I was told that if I don't sign the plea, they're keeping my vehicle for uh, evidence for my new case. If I don't sign the plea, I'm gonna have a new case. Because I got two new charges, both under the city of Tucson. Therefore, there's no jury trial, period, no matter what. Okay. And so they're going to, if I don't sign the plea, I'm going to get two new charges. If I don't sign the plea, they're going to keep my vehicle because they've already stolen it back from me and put mm -hmm. me in jail. And if I don't sign the plea, they're going to take me, put me, incarcerate me once again, and I got to wait in jail. Until this is what they told me. They decide to until you know. my trial. So that that was the options that Chris yeah. had about two days ago. Great options. Uh, so you took the uh, option of signing the plea Correct. agreement, right? So at this point, it can never. My case cannot go to a jury trial. Period. Okay. It's done. Second, I signed. So here's what I believe Chris is facing. He's going to confirm it. When you sign a plea agreement, they basically give you a laundry list of what possibly could be the terms of your probation sure. when you come back in about a month. And you only learn the exact terms when you show up, and for you it's October 22nd? I believe so. Okay. So here's the most important thing about what we're doing right now. Until October 22nd, um, we're looking for an outpouring of people, 
who are who have always supported Chris and what he's done being an anti geoengineering activist yeah. in Tucson. So we're going to set up an email address. The email address we set up for we are all Chris Haskell is not working, so please use my original email Haskellfilms at Yahoo.com. Haskellfilms at Yahoo.com with a Z. The other option is going to be handwritten notes sent to Chris's home and Chris will give you the address. Five eight four nine East Burns Street. That's B U R N S Street. Tucson, Arizona, and that's spelled T-U-C-S-O-N, and Arizona 85711. So, so let me cover what, the way it works is that we've got a little bit of time to rep, present something to the judge. Yes. The judge is supposed to read through it, and, and it's going to help her make the decisions. And typically what happens here is people will get letters of reference, so I will do that from my Neighbors that's a good point. and that's my friends. Point. That's a good point. That would be more personal. Yeah. Okay. And it would be great if a, a large outcrying of the public. Do you? What do you think? Do you think Chris Haskell should give it all to him? You know, and yeah. we'll put them all in there. Yeah. Whatever you think. What I signed actually could be. You know, it's quite drastic here. So they. I've been told that most likely I'm going to get two years probation. Okay. For this, um, it could be up to. Two years in prison, though, and they can also throw a fine on me mm -hmm. for up to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's true. They they said they don't anticipate any fine. There's no victims, so we'll see how that goes. And then I got to pay probation costs, which that's going to be a little difficult. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's I guess so. That's supposedly what I'm going to be doing by signing it. That brings up one good point. If the probation lists among its terms that you can't post any signs for the length of your probation. This is where I personally believe we're going to need a civil rights First Amendment ACLU type of attorney to step in and say you can't, uh, or to fight, or possibly somebody from the Rutherford Group, our cameraman just gave yeah. us a, a good cue, thanks Wayne. Um, so if, if the terms of the probation are too draconian, yes. and you know I believe that's where we should be able to get an attorney to to fight this. But keep in mind that um, no matter what, at this point we left it up to the judge. Yes. So yes. The, an attorney can make a difference, which one? But the reality is, this is now up to yeah. that judge. From what and I understand really about is. the plea process, I you know I got up to speed with this meeting with Chris's attorney, uh, who's a fine guy, you know. Uh, I have no problem with him, except he is connected to the Tucson establishment very deeply, so he's not going to be fighting the establishment, you know, as far as I understand. I'm sure he didn't have a choice. And, and I have no problem with that. However, here's what I understand about the plea agreement, and see if you can confirm this. When you sign for a plea, to go into a plea agreement, they give you a Chinese menu of the parameters that they can use, and you're only going to find out what the actual sentence is or, you know, the terms are the day that you show up in court on October 22nd. Correct. Now, from what I understand, you have to accept them on that day or go directly to jail. If you want to oppose them, then you have to come back into court on a later date to, to, to fight the terms that the yes. judge came up with. So that's where we may need, or Chris may need, uh, a new attorney to, to fight this particular part, if the probation terms go in. I do believe the, the letters are, are really important here. That is what everybody that's ever dealt with this speaks of, and that's, you know, it, it's going to say a lot. The judge now has it in her mind. She can take her whole grasp of the picture. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I was not a harm to society. Mm -hmm. I don't believe anyone in the right mind that has investigated this case would believe that I was a threatening public. Or, or my family or anyone. I, that's just not my principles. It's not, it's not me. So let's tell the people your YouTube uh, channel name. It's, it's Haskell Films. That's one, uh, one word, and the end is a Z instead of an S. So it's my last name, Haskell Films, one word. So it's H-A-S-K-E-L-L-F-I-L-M-Z. Yeah. That's Chris's YouTube channel, and that's where I became convinced that this guy was the real deal because I went through his videos from the last, what, 10 years at least? Yeah, a lot. And 
I saw what he did through the years. And it's very similar to some of the stuff I did, but I gotta tell you, this guy is the world champion, signed poster and activist, out on the street, boots on the ground, talking to people in person. I don't think anybody in the United States or possibly even the world has ever done any more than you have. And now that you say that, I would suggest that somebody that's a great writer or you know, can, can put it to words correctly and they know, they might want to go back and look at some of that stuff. That's why he's mentioning that because it would be important they're gonna they're gonna maybe come up with something new. Wow, are you seeing this? So, yeah, please, okay. please go back and look at some of my history, because I've done a lot of things that yep. I didn't even mention or whatever. There are many other. Um, uh, what would he call? From the cameraman, yep. he's the only guy I've ever seen with a chemtrail van. By the way, the police still have that right now, right? Okay, so what yeah. Lane is saying off camera, because you may not be able to hear him on our mics. Uh, they heard it. <laughs> Chris, yeah, Chris is the only guy with a chemtrail van that we know of, although there are, there's a guy in, in uh, yeah. England who has a chemtrail I, set up, which is pretty darn I good. I see some neat Terry stuff, Ball. but yeah. one thing that's awesome about mine, not only is it graphic, my idea was when I take a left turn at even pretty quick speed, uh, all the people sitting, if they're paying any attention, is going to be like, and I'd watch them, they'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Let me describe it. Across his what, Dodge Caravan? Or yeah, it's Dodge Grand Caravan. It's kind of, kind of a dark gray, if I remember correctly. Yeah, at the time it was silver. Okay. Was silver and I but it. there was a jet with, you know, trails it's coming out of the jet, the and all of the trails were made up of little tiny skulls. Yeah, I made a bunch of little uh, skull uh, 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 what do you call it? stencils. And so I, I just sat there for half a day putting them on sh 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 with a spray can and going. Because people were like, really? Is that? Yeah. Oh my God, that is? Yeah. And that's how they put it in the police report. Instead of putting Chrysler uh, uh, Town and Country, they put Chemtrail Van with Skulls. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot right the there. Van, yeah. it, it, one of the things about it, and, and I didn't point this out before, is that created a situation where everyone, when they see this van, they go, Oh my gosh, and they want to talk to me. So maybe a lot of other people didn't hear all, uh, who's awake right now. Well, I knew because I'd go out for one day and I'd get a lot of people just oh, pull over, pull over, you know. They'd see the chem drill there, and yeah. it's it's powerful. I don't know. There are very few people in this world that have dedicated their vehicle to anti geoengineering. Tucson activism. is a test market. Tucson was selected. And Chris, from what yeah, I understand, was arrested about a week or so yep. before Harvard University and Dr. Yeah. David Keith made their announcement that yes. they would like to use Tucson as a place to do experiments in seeing if maybe someday we might look at using geoengineering sometime in the future. Did I get that? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that's just coincidental that I just got placed into jail when they announced this, sure. Yeah, just before they announced it. It's not like I would have hollered or anything. I, I think the power sure. structure said wrap him up so we can get him out of the way, yeah, let the news cycle yeah, uh, take him out of the memory banks of most people that supported yeah. him. And that's why we're doing all this. It may be a long process right now, but we want to make sure that the, the, the best details of the story are known and on tape for people to understand. Absolutely. All right. You know, and, and can we throw another aspect in? Can, can we get that lane over here for a second? I would like to jump well, me out of here for just one moment. Okay. And I'd like to cover, <clears throat> did we ever met before this? You and I met <clears throat> briefly on the streets of okay. Tucson uh, on May 13th, 2018, okay. right after the third annual uh, summit to stop geoengineering was finished. Correct, correct. So be, prior to my arrest, I never met you, and honestly, no, I didn't no, even know your name. No. And this is Lane, and Lane, um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, yeah, he's gonna, I'll, I'll do it. Um, Lane, uh, it? the whole idea is here is that, did you know me? Do you even know me from Adam, anything? Did you? Uh, I saw you on the news uh, one time. Actually, twice I saw you on the news, and I liked it, because I don't see much on the news I like. But the stories on you were very nice. I was like, wow, they're actually covering a, an activist doing geoengineering signs on the news. And I was, I was like, wow. So I've seen you on the news twice. Just hold it. Yeah. I'd, I'd seen you on the news twice. And then, uh, and then I met you at the geoengineering, third annual geoengineering on May 12th that we 
that we all attended. Yep. Yep. And that's where, I, and you were outside actually, and I had showed up late because I had to work that day, but I, they knew where I was coming. I had passed out flyers for it and forth and stuff. I was helping Matt, you know, yeah. ways to get people there. And so, uh, and you were outside and, and you, were, you were talking to somebody and I, I went up to you and I said, oh, and you were telling your story. I said, oh, I know you. I saw you on the news, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, me and you talked for the first time and or I kind of listened to you. You were kind of telling people about your thing, you know, and I was like, yeah, I know, I know you. Yeah, yeah. And I sat there and I listened to you, you know? And then, uh, then we met again at the protest downtown against geoengineering. You which attended, was the next day. Which was the next day. Sunday, May 13th. Not that, you know, there was like over three or four hundred people at the geoengineering thing mm -hmm. all over the country. What amazes me is all my signs, me and Jamie passing out signs downtown, 4th Ave. Wasn't that many two signs. There, a lot of people from around the world, though, and around the country showed up. That's there were true. tons yeah, of that's people true. from other places. There were people yeah. from Michigan. There were people from Texas. It was really Facebook. From that's, New you know, it was really Facebook friends that all showed up here. You know, it was three, four hundred people there. And then the next morning, there was a good 40, 50 of us that showed up to do the protest. You know, yeah. and uh, and then we all went and had lunch, and and you showed up, and you know, and that that was the first time I ever met you, and then uh, yeah. And then I don't know how we hooked up after that, but we did. And and my my guess is is you're you're just like everyone else that heard my story. You know, he he had a lot of questions, and uh, you know hey, I think I, they got I, answered. I do want to one more time. Okay. Say to my supporters. Yeah. It's been it's made a big difference the kind of support I got. So I want to thank you very much once again for being there, having my back, and uh, the money was important. All of it made a big difference. Definitely. Definitely.